All right, Spencer Langston sent me a care package here. Let's see what it is. Well, this is the package that my alternator came in. He sells a lot of these himself. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Ooh, pretty. I imagine this will have higher efficiency because it's a larger diameter. I'll be running at a lower RPM. And because the larger diameter, it should be more efficient from a, uh, a water velocity interaction standpoint. Right now I have it running uh, full bore on my two brass nozzles. We see we're getting a little over 400 watts on average here. And we're going to see if this is going to get us uh, more efficiency out of the same two nozzles. I'd like to thank Spencer Langston of Langston's Alternative Power for sending me this in exchange for... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what. I did send him some impellers for a low-head turbine, so maybe that's it. Check him out at langstonalternativepower.com. This is a Pelton runner, by the way. I just measured the voltage at 209 volts. This is limited to 204.6. So it was 209 and change. It was fluctuating a few, a few volts. Uh, so we're going to see what RPM that is. I'm going to guess somewhere around 4,000 RPM on my RPM meter here. <clears throat> And it's really rip-roaring. I can hear it from here. And the snow is actually dampening a lot of the noise. Man, that thing's loud. So here's how fast and easy it is to disconnect this. First I have the three electrical connections. Ta-da! Seconds <clears throat> to disconnect that. Now I have to connect, or collect all of the fittings and things here. Yep, got all of them. All right, that's pretty good. Now I have to run and get my hose. That's a bypass, <clears throat> so my pen stock does not freeze. Maybe there's a little bit more ice in there, huh? Go ahead, thaw out in there. Although I now realize that my valves are on the turbine and not here, which is okay. I can fix that too. Now I could disconnect this and put it here, but I think, I think the easiest thing will be to just put a cap right here. So that gets set aside, and then this is the easiest thing in the world to just put that on there with the cap. And that's done. And now this is probably thought out enough to go on here. There we go. And then I grab a <clears throat> concrete block. Okay, maybe not that one that's got all sorts of debris on the top. We'll try this one. Oh, it's got lots of stuff on it too. There you go. Gotta stick this <clears throat> in there. And I put a block on it.
keep it from coming out. And then I can turn this on. All right, and then turn this on. All right, looking at this after a few uh, months of operation, there's something that I realized that's interesting. This spoon here is half broken off. <laughs> and then I was just spinning it at 3,200 RPMs and it's got a broken spoon. So I wonder if that might have broken when uh, one of the, plastic, the 3D printed jets that I made blew apart and probably took that with it. And it's been working like that ever since, so whatever. Here's my favorite tool, not really, but it does the job. <coughs> there we go. Got some Loctite on there, that keeps everything from corroding and freezing up. And then this should just pop right off. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> See that spoon? I can't believe I was running it like that. I feel bad now. <laughs> well, we can look at the wear on the other spoons. And really, I don't see any effective wear at all. They might look a little bit more matte than normal. They're not like a shiny, glossy inside, but they're they're a little bit more flat, matte. Like they've been sandblasted or polished by a little bit of uh, debris in the water. I'm gonna put this back in here so I don't lose it because this is a very special thread that I could not find except in one hardware store of all the hardware stores in town. And that hardware store has now closed, so <laughs> I don't know where I could even get one of those anymore, besides going online. And we're going to replace this with this. Which have the same, same spoons on them, but this one's just much larger. We can see that the uh, if we line it up here, the diameter is considerably larger. Um, I think this is about five inch pitch diameter, and then this one is an eight inch pitch diameter. So it should spin a lot slower, and be a lot more torquey, hopefully more efficient. The only problem is it don't fit. So I need to build another one of these. The uh, unos momentos después. Off camera, I built a new housing. Here I am trying to peel the plastic off of this plastic, and then it's got a haze on it from sitting on some bow shield too much. And then I put it on the plywood box that I built and painted, and then I attached the uh, turbine alternator to the turbine itself with some spacers, and then I installed the jets. And then here's a, a final cap that's an adapter to fit on the existing turbine pit. All right, reconnecting it should be just as easy as disconnecting it, I hope. Well, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently and leave this disconnected, hook up the turbine to the hoses there and then reconnect that. I'm get that out of the way. wire out of the way. I don't know where exactly to put my phone. I guess there would be okay. Because I need it to monitor the GoPro. So first I guess make sure that it fits in the pit and it does. So that's good. I apologize if a lot of this is washed out and can't really be seen. That goes that way, so the nut should go on this side. Okay, 
that one's done. Okay. There we go, that's in. Now we can re attempt to reconnect this. Looks like it should be okay. Let's uh, turn the water off first, huh? Yeah? Okay. This looks like it should be pretty easy. Yep, there we are. Okay, that's on. That's good. And I'll check tightness for everything else. Okay. I'll reconnect the electrical. Now, I know that I still need to connect these better, and that's on my to-do list. But I love these Wago connectors for their speed. You can very quickly connect and disconnect stuff. And because this is three phase, it doesn't matter which wire goes to which. The rectifier converts it into DC. Okay, those are good. All right, we're ready to turn it on. Turbine revision 0.2 in the, another temporary plywood box to verify that the diameter of the runner is gonna be approximately right for when I go to Turgo in a stainless housing. Again, all just temporary. Let's see what it does. Turn that off. Uh, make sure both these are off to begin with. Turn our water on. Do it slowly, verify we don't get anything blowing apart. Yep, looks pretty good. Now we can turn this on. Looks like I'm getting some blow by there. So we've got some power coming out of it. Um, I need to find some more loads. All right, I've got some more loads on. That's a heated pad there. You see the battery voltage is low enough to actually push some amps into it. We're at 450 watts. 58 volts in. So we've picked up about 50 watts, approximately. Now I'm curious if 
maybe the charge controller is not really best suited to put a whole bunch of power into a 12 volt source because this will do up to 48 volts and I need to get a whole 48 volt system. I'm waiting on my buddy to hook me up with some used telecom batteries for free. So that's why I haven't gone forward with doing anything with those. Maybe I'll have to talk with Spencer about this and see why the efficiency is not good. <laughs> I let the bearings warm up and we're over 500 watts.